Hi there and welcome to the 16th row in the Get Fit by Rowing series. Now don't worry if you've landed on row 16 and you think, oh man, I've missed a few. You can either do this one or you can roll all the way back to row one. It's just up to you as long as you row. I don't mind what order you do these in, okay? Now today's row is going to be a hard tempo row, okay? What does that mean? Well, we do, uh, in this series, we do a low intensity, we do a mid hard kind of tempo row, and then we do a max intensity row. And we gauge that today by saying it's going to be a zone three to four heart rate zone and that means it's going to be between 70 and 90 percent of your maximum heart rate now that's quite a large range but when you hear what today's row is you'll understand why because what we're going to do is half hour row nice and easy half hour but we're going to split this into one minute chunks okay so you have to pay attention uh, and we're going to start off at 20 strokes a minute and then we're going to increase to 24 and then we're going to increase to 30 strokes a minute and then we're going to back down again go 20 four then down to 20 again then we're going to start all over again so basically you end up with two 20 strokes a minute together and what that means is you've got five minute chunks okay when you go up and down this pyramid and you've got six of them well hey you're done but what happens is because you're increasing your intensity as you go up and down the pyramid that is what's going to take your heart rate up and down through zone three and four okay and so that's really the point of it so you'll get a t point for that one minute at 30 strokes a minute where it'll feel a little bit tough but because you then get to recover it takes you back okay and that's what's going to keep this away from it's not going to be an easy row it's not going to be a max row it's going to be in between it's going to be baby bear all right so we still Still need to get into our four minute warm up to make sure our body's ready for today's session so I hope you will join me in setting up your machine first. Which on a water roar there's not much to be done all I have to do is put my monitor at eye height and then adjust my foot stretcher height. If you're on a concept two make sure and set your drag factor to where you want that to be. If you don't know about drag factor, that's perfectly fine. Set your lever between like four and five, uh, and then watch the video I have here on this channel about drag factor to have a better idea where to set it, okay? Uh, if you're on a non-concept two and you have it like an adjustment dial for resistance, just set it so you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it, okay? If you have to pull with your upper body rather than pushing with your legs, it's something's gone wrong. And finally, uh, with those foot stretchers, set them to a height where you're able to come into the front of the machine with your shins, in a vertical position, okay? If you're set too high, it can be a bit tough to get there. If you're set too low, you can go scooting straight past, and that way, uh, it, yeah, it just causes power leaks. Now, long intro, so let's get into this uh, warm up, okay? So do this run about 20 strokes a minute, a, a low push. I'll describe as we start, um, start rowing, because we might as well start rowing, all right? Here we go, in three, two, one, let's go. So, I have been describing the intensity that you start off the warm up at. It's just, it's, <laughs> I've been trying to, but unfortunately my tongue doesn't work. As though you are standing up from a squat while holding two bags of shopping. So you're not like jumping, springing up into the air. You're just standing up right now. Okay, so just think about just pressing in with the legs as though standing up, but you're holding some shopping. So you have to press a little bit and that way you'll get some form of intensity going into the machine and you can help think about that push of the legs and think about the forwards tilt into the front of the machine with straight arms as you do so. And then you only swing over your back towards the back end of the stroke and then you pull in your arms. So we're a minute in and if you want, you can just, you can hold a couple of cases of beer in those hands those arms as you're standing up. So you have to put a bit more of a push from your legs, increase that intensity as you push through the stroke. But remember, as you increase intensity, it's more about pushing with the legs than it is about pulling with the arms. You're hanging off your arms for the majority of the stroke and it's only at the back that you finally pull in to a strong finish. Okay, so in four strokes time, I'm gonna take one foot out and put it on the ground and then continue rowing. You don't have to, of course, but it's a good drill to do. So here we go. Get my water bottle out of the way. Continue rowing. And this helps with flexibility, really. That tilt as you come forwards can be a little bit tough when you're 
not totally warm and you've got both feet strapped in but it's a lot easier with just one foot in so let's take one last stroke here swap feet Oop. Oh, always throws me the fact that water rower the strap is kind of loose behind the board so when you tighten one the other one gets tight as well or if you loosen one the other one gets tight that can get a bit confusing for my little brain <laughs> okay last one here sorry don't know where i went there put both feet back in legs straight and roll with your back and arms so that means swinging over your hips first to pick up the initial strain of the stroke and then pulling in with the arms okay so swing pull then out with the arms rock forwards and this is an into such an important part of the stroke is that you swing then pull and then out with the arms and forwards again and let's roll to the front with straight arms and a forward tilt and push out from the front with your legs and really just try and concentrate on holding your forwards tilt and straight arms for as long as possible okay so push and really try and avoid your back swinging too soon or pulling with your arms right, last one here Ooh, i'll talk a bit technique today in the main session i'll try not to talk too much about it but i'll bring in those concepts again just so you can feel what it's like mid stroke to think about that don't know what's wrong with my brain today let's hope it gets better for the main session keep on moving up and down the rail have a quick drink and i'll say one more time what it is we're doing today okay one more time then today's row is going to be a pyramid session where we're going to start off at 20 strokes a minute then we're going to increase our stroke rate and therefore our pace to 24 and then increase again up to 30 and then decrease to 24 and decrease to 20 again then we start all over again so we get two 20s in a row eventually okay so we're just going to do that over and over and over again um, until our 30 minutes is done and i'll try and concentrate and keep uh, with the way my brain is today who knows it'll, if whether i'll miss one or not but i'll try and concentrate and keep us on track for when we're doing all these change-ups okay uh, pace wise i want you to really just start that first 20 strokes a minute and each time you come back to it run right about the pace that you were doing the warm-up at just then when we when you added in a bit more power so that's kind of right about 2k plus 20 pace for those that have a 2k training pace it's right about five out of ten effort sorry i've got something in my eye um this is so not going well um uh yeah uh and then you increase when you get up to 24 you increase by about six seconds when you go up to 30 you increase by probably about another six or seven seconds again and then you back off those paces and really what i want you to do is once you set in these paces try and hold them through the entire workout your heart rate shouldn't drift too high anyway if you just stick to your paces the whole way through so um, this is one that you don't particularly have to do is heart rate training just pick your pace and stick to it for each of the six times that we go through this pyramid all right so one last quick drink and we'll get into it there's been a lot of explaining today but it's a kind of session where I kind of need to let you know what's happening. And I'll tell you again while we're going through the row, of course. Are you ready for this? Good. So we're starting off at 20 strokes per minute at that 2K plus 20 or 2K plus 18 pace, 5 out of 10 effort. Um, your low intensity 20 strokes a minute row that you've been doing so far in this series, that's the pace we're starting off for this 20 strokes a minute, okay? All right, here we go. In three, two, one, let's go. Now, of course, the thing about heart rate based training is that sometimes in order to get into the that kind of zone two the 60 to 70 percent your pace can change from session to session depending on how activated your system is what i mean is you can sit down at the machine and you find your resting heart rate is already quite high because maybe you've had a bit of a stressed day and therefore you maybe have to knock off a couple of seconds off your pace to get there. But just stick to what you've most constantly been seeing when you've been doing the low intensity 20 strokes a minute rows, okay? Okay, so in four strokes time, we've got our first change up to 24 strokes a minute. So one more stroke. 
And then all you do here is push a little harder with your legs. And what that will do is give you a faster drive speed. And as a result of that extra power and taking four strokes more per minute, you should find that you're going five or six seconds faster without having to think about it. You just are. And the same will happen in the next increase. When we go up to 30, you just push harder with the legs to get there and you should automatically go faster. So three, two, one, here we go. So one stroke every two seconds. Push harder with your legs. If you're struggling to keep the rate up, think about the rhythm of your arms. They never stop. You certainly don't hold them against your body at the back of the stroke. So it comes in and then release them instantly at the same pace you pulled in at. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so back to 24. Just ease off that push. And you should get a sense of recovery already. Whew. Even though it may have been a little bit of a rude spike in intensity. If you are wearing a heart rate monitor and you do what I say about sticking to pace, it'll be interesting to see what your cardiac drift is like through the workout. One more here. Down to 20. Now we get two minutes here because this is us climbing down to the bottom of the pyramid again. And then we'll kind of walk around the bottom of the pyramid before starting our climb again. Oh, I get the feeling this is not going to be one of my big storytelling rows because I'm too busy trying to concentrate <laughs> on all the change ups. Okay, so this is the end of our first set. But remember, we're staying at 20. So there's a fair chance that certainly as you get to this point after the first interval, your heart rate will be dipping into zone two because you haven't really worked massively hard yet. That's what I mean about the cardiac drift as we go through this workout. And it takes a larger toll on your system. Okay, you ready for the first change up? It's happening in three strokes time. Ooh. One more. 
Okay, and let's go. So a bit harder, more pressure, faster drive phase. And if you're rowing with a good rhythm, for these lower stroke rates, your drive speed is twice as fast as your recovery. So when your drive increases a little, your recovery increases well, a little bit too, I'm sorry. I literally just tried to do the maths and <laughs> couldn't work it out. I've got <laughs> exercise brain already. Okay, four strokes and then we're back up again. Two more. All right, here we go. 30 strokes a minute. Get that fast drive phase. Here it starts to get closer to one to one where the drive and the recovery last the same duration. 30 seconds on this one. Keep that stroke rate nice and high. Don't back off because you're going to get rest very soon. Five, four, three, two, one. Back to 24. So you're just reducing that pressure a little bit, but I want you still uh, at the same pace you're at on the way up the pyramid. So don't ease off your intensity yet and even at 20 I don't want you going any slower than you have been for your 20s okay back to 20 then so if you were rowing 205 pace on the way up the ladder, I want you back at 205 pace for this 20 section and the one that follows. Hopefully, you are getting the right sensation from this. I know I am. But although the intensity and pace that you'll be rowing at for the 30 strokes a minute sections is up at what we've kind of been doing closer to our max intensity because it's only for one minute it's not too bad but because it's bracketed with the 24s that's what keeps it beneficial for your heart rate zones Whew. I know we can tell when I start getting quite staccato with my speech pattern you can tell it's definitely biting in for me okay two more strokes one more 
and we're up to 24. And hopefully you'll at least agree that this workout is flying by. We are past 11 minutes already. And the climb up and down through the 24s just seems to come and go like lightning. Possibly because you're like, oh, I've got to work hard. Okay, four more strokes. Two more. One more, then we're up to 30 again. You ready? Let's go. Nice and fast. Big push with the legs. Handle away quickly, but smoothly with a good rhythm. And make sure as you push from the front, you're keeping your arms straight and trying to maintain that forward tilt for as long as you can. But I dropped a stroke, I may have. Okay, six to go. Four, three, two, one, back to 24. One stroke every two and a half seconds. Oh, I'm really feeling this is a bit harder than normal today, but I know why. It's a combination of it being a really warm day outside, so I'm likely quite dehydrated, but also I went for a long run yesterday. Two more, one more. Okay, two minutes at 20. Reduce that pace. Oh, yeah. Yesterday was such a nice evening that when I finished work and I knew I had no time to come out for a row, I, uh, decided to go for my first long run in about two months. And the good news is, much like its effect on my cycling, this Get Fit series meant from a fitness point of view, I was able to run exactly 11 kilometers in exactly an hour. Not by design, just turned up. I got home and that was my time and pace. But having only done maximum duration of 22 minutes during an episode of How I Met Your Mother, for the past few weeks. I was quite pleased to have the fitness to run 11K. Okay, four more strokes, and then we'll take it up to 24 again. One more, you ready? 
Oh, here we go. So we're well past the halfway point now. And that's what I mean about time flying. But yeah, very happy that I had the fitness to run that far. Because after all, that's what this plan is about. It's about improving your fitness and not just on the rowing machine. Your fitness all over will improve and it's just up to you to train the muscles for a different sport if you want to. Three, two, one, up to 30. So I do want to remind you that although there are varying intensities in this series, it's not really geared towards performance. So it's not going to fine tune you for a 2k but what I'll do is give you the core fitness you need when you do want to sharpen for a 2k two strokes one more back to 25 keep that pace up it's important you don't rest on the way down your rest kind of comes through the two minutes worth of 20s so don't back off too soon through these 24s okay four more three two one back to 20 and that pace that you've been holding I hope at this rate since the start sorry I had to clear a low power message on my phone just then hopefully it's still got ten and a half minutes left of battery and hopefully we've all got 10 minutes and 18 seconds worth of battery in our bodies there's only two more pyramids to go it's good news and we're into the 20 of the next one now and there's less than 10 minutes to go at this stage really try and focus on your breath and your technique don't let any weariness start to erode a good technique good posture oh. arms straight as you come forwards forwards tilt and then push with the legs push <sighs> okay three more strokes and then back to 24 one more you ready 
Here we go. Just increase that push. Keep your arms straight. And what you should find is that the power from your legs through your body and into your hands changes in feel as you increase stroke rate. It feels like you need to brace against the handle more when you power the legs. And that's because you do in order to send that power into the machine. Okay, three, two, one, up to 30. And this is really the one where breathing and rhythm play such an important role. I've said many times that rowing is like dancing with the machine where it's about rhythm. It's like Tai Chi. Everything flows from move to move. Doesn't matter what machine you're on, you want good flow. Three more. Two. One. There we go. Oh, 24 strokes per minute. Whew. I think I dropped half a second there. I'll make sure to get back in time. Man, I should have put some kind of fan on. <laughs> I thought about it, but was so worried about sound quality, but then the water roar is so much quieter than Concept 2. It could have taken it. Okay, down to 20. And your low intensity, five out of 10, 2K plus 18 to 20 pace. This is us just descending the second last pyramid oh, before we do our final up and down. This really is one of those sessions where you get back what you put into it. If you just limped through this workout, you probably stayed firmly in zone two, possibly three. But if you had the drive, tenacity, dedication to stick with the pace targets at each stage of today's row, then hopefully you've really seen the results. I know I have. I certainly feel like this is a hard in-between level row. One more stroke here and then we'll go up to 24. 
Uh, it's our last 24 climb. We'll still have one to deal with on the way down, but keep that pace up. Keep that push from the legs and really try and reward yourself on each stroke by spotting that you're rowing at the right pace. Okay, six more. You can tell when I get tired because all I do <laughs> is count down. Two more strokes. One more. And let's go up to 30 for the last time. Come on. Try and hit your stroke rate and pace and hold it for this minute. You don't have to worry about sprinting. This isn't that kind of workout because you still have two more minutes off the end of it. Where are we? Okay, 10 strokes. Push. Finish strong with the arms and then right back out smoothly. Three, two, one. And back to 24. And I was just nudging the red zone by the end of that one. So in terms of heart rate training, I've accomplished what I wanted today. And that's kind of what I was getting at at the beginning but how sometimes if you are tired or dehydrated it can get you higher quicker <laughs> right, 20 strokes a minute so I wasn't rowing anywhere near my usual 205 pace or oh, I'm not sorry for these 20s I'm down at 209 pace and then two minutes pace for the 24s and 155 for the 30s which is a good five seconds or four or five seconds off what I would normally row at but like I say dehydration and fatigue got me there quicker and not just there goes that's all done not just from a heart rate point of view but just from a perceived effort I knew that if I was going to try and hold my even 205 and then go two minutes 155 or 159, 152 that I would blow out of I'd have ended up in zone 5 quite quickly Whew. I'm going to have a quick drink before we hit the two minute cool down because I'm very dehydrated oh, Okay I programmed it a two minute cool down you don't have to program it in, of course. You can just do a just row, but if you want to program it in, as I'm fighting with the foot straps, hopefully that'll give you enough time. Oh, so my legs just feel very dead after that run. Are you ready for this? So just at that 20 strokes a minute pace, 
then gradually slow down, okay? So in three, two, one, let's go. So even if you're like, you know what, I don't even, can't even face that 20 strokes a minute pace after about, well, by now, yes, I did just drink water. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> so it's my phone going off again. Um, yeah, if you want to start easing off now, that's perfectly okay. Bearing in mind, we did end the main session anyway by gradually easing off the power. So you're already halfway there for a cool down. And this is just about flushing out your muscles, giving you a chance for your brain to disengage. Because it takes a lot. Well, for me anyway, it takes a lot to concentrate on getting that rise up and down in those intervals and not missing one. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, these sessions, they really are just here for variation, which is why I'm tending to do things like this or the three, two, one, because I know how sometimes it can get a little bit mundane doing the same thing in and out on the rowing machine. And that means even low intensity, max intensity, even if the sessions are different, it can still feel very monotonous. So these hard tempo sessions are a good time to just put in a bit of variation. Like I think it's just the first time we've done a full 30 without any rests in this series for the hard, I can't remember. We may have done one before. Oh, there we go. Just done the cool down. In fact, yeah, it wasn't the three, two, one. That was as well. All right, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> right. Oh. So, I'm gonna get to a bit of stretching next if I can catch my breath. If you don't have time to stretch, please take a moment to stretch your quads, your hamstrings and your glutes because, well, they're important to stretch, but don't do it in the shower, please, because I don't want you to slip and fall over, because that would be bad. Um, if in that amount of flanneling time, you've managed to find yourself a corner in your gym or your garage or your living room, wherever, on a stretching mat, then Stretchy John will take you through some stretches that you can do on your said stretching mat. Or you can follow me. Oh, see, I've got to get it wrong already. I was going straight to glutes. You can follow me for stretching on the machine. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Deary me. Right, legs nice and straight, okay? But don't lock the knees down, just nice and straight. Uh, feet back in the foot stretchers with a little bit of a gap. Hands in the air and oh, fold forward. <laughs> forwards. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the sound of a man with very tight hamstrings. Problem is, is because I've got this hip flexor injury, which, point of, point of order, that run yesterday really didn't help my hip flexor injury. I kind of, I was, I did that. My intention yesterday was to go out for like a 5K run, give it a little bit of a test, see how my hip flexor felt, and then maybe at um, some point next week coming, go for a longer run. But it was such a nice night that as I got to the end of my 5K loop, I couldn't stop. <laughs> right, let's move on to glutes now. Finally, we get to those glutes. So one leg up on the rail, bring uh, foot over, oh, so your heels in the crook of your knee. Yeah. Then bring that knee across your body so you have a straight line between your face, your knee, and your foot. I've got sweat my eyes now. Um, and then hold that knee in place with one arm, and the, with your other arm, sorry. And then rotate round, just hold on to the back of the machine, and you should get a nice stretch into your glutes. Ah, oh. oh, there we go. Sorry, that was a very poor description. I was too busy going, I can't see. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and as long as you get that rotation in here, you should feel you get that nice kind of radiating kind of glow of a stretch that comes up from your, your glutes. Um, yeah, oh. Yeah, so anyway, so I overdid my run yesterday and hip flex was not too happy, hamstrings not too happy. And uh, I got, I obviously have a bit of uh, tendonitis in my Achilles tendon as well because I've been unable to walk up and down stairs today. Right, let's swap legs on the glutes. It's easing off now though. I'm just, I'm a walking injury, just constantly just chasing one thing or another. If it's not my elbows, it's my hip. If it's not my hip, it's my uh, calves. If it's not my calves, it's my 
Achilles tendon. And it's all from overuse. Don't have any sympathy for me. It's like, it's from coming back too soon and overdoing it. Or like yesterday, the first run in ages, going for a 10K run. No wonder my Achilles tendon's like, uh, excuse me, <sighs> could you not do that next time? <laughs> uh, yes, I have ended my workout. Oh, right, let's move on to quads. Sorry. Arg. Oh, yes. And that pirate noise was the sound of sore legs standing up. Oh. The problem is that I keep on, I'm spending so much time stretching my hip flex so that I'm forgetting to stretch like after the run yesterday. I totally didn't stretch anything else other than my hip flexors because I knew that it was going to give me some kind of grief today. So I thought, well, I'll be a good boy and stretch my piriformis and my hip flexor. But then I completely forgot to do quads and calves and Achilles tendon and hamstrings. So that's why I'm a bit tight. And that, dear viewer, listener, ugh, it's all very good when you're 18, but not when you're 48. <laughs> I keep on, I must be saying or typing this in to the internet somehow, because uh, I keep on getting adverts for hyperbolic stretching. <laughs> These courses is like, do this course for four weeks and you'll be as supple as a rubber band. I'm like, hmm. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't think I've ever stumbled across an online course like that. Uh, fitness or or anything photography or I'm trying to think what other ones so I'm just doing sorry doing hip flexors next so one foot uh, is in front of you with the knee straight above your ankle and your other foot is behind you with your knee in front so you've got a 90 degree angle in both uh, keep a nice posture uh, tense the glute that is on the ground or the glute that has the knee on the ground if you get what I mean uh, tense your abs and then lean back slightly and you should get a good stretch yeah yeah Anything that's just been a random advert that's popped up on Facebook or something, uh, trying to sell some kind of a course, a fitness course or something. Um, I've never found it's been useful. Things that are like, uh, here's a, a free 10 day something. The free ones, yes, weirdly, but the ones that you pay for, no. I don't know why. I don't know why it is that the ones that you pay for are, nowhere, are never as effective. Uh, whether it's that they try and they give you the good stuff and the free one <laughs> to really draw you in. And then you pay for the main course that they're like, ha ha, you paid now, I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna give you. Oh, um, I'm swapping legs for hip flexors now. I'm not, I've, you've already got the stuff, I'm not gonna, there's nothing else to give. And you're like, oh, all right. Ooh. That was the sound of me almost falling over. Right, so same thing again, other leg. Um, yeah, so, and of course, I, mean, I can say this from the point of view that I don't sell anything, so <laughs> everything I give away is for free. So everything I do must be absolutely fantastic. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Oh, hang on, I'm kneeling on something sore. Uh, um, there we go, that's better. Um, yeah, I don't know, I think, I don't know, I don't know where I sit on, on, because I mean, there's a few things that have popped up on adverts on Facebook or whatever that I have. There's uh, recently I bought some lovely sunglasses um, Kylo, oh, was it Kylo on the line? Kylo on the rim? Kylo on the, oh, I can't remember what it is. Kylo, oh, I was wearing them all day as well. I can't even remember. Ah, um, oh, because I normally wear, or this too, sorry, I, this is going on a bit, but you know, it's taking me so long to stand up because my legs are so sore after yesterday's run. Bear with, please. <laughs> Bear with her. Um, hands in front of your face. We're going to do wrists and forearms next. Push those hands together and then bring them down in front of your body. And as they come down, you'll get a nice stretch into your forearms and your wrists. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Nice stretch. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a toll after today's row, but it's still worthwhile stretching. Um, yeah, Kylo. I keep on wanting to say Kylo Ren, but obviously that's Star Wars. So it's not that. But it's Kylo something. And I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I usually wear uh, sunglasses by Gooder, G-O-O-D-R, when I'm going out for runs and things because they're really lightweight, they're quite funky looking, um, but because they're lightweight and they stay in place, they're great for when you're running in the sun. Uh, but weirdly, this Kylo, whatever, popped up um, and it turned out that it was somewhere in, in near me in, in Scotland that sold them. So I thought, I, I'll be supporting a Scottish company now, you know. you got to keep it in Scotland. Let's move on to our shoulders. Push your hand out in front of you. Bring it across your body. I like that, Sonny. And then move it into place with your other arm. I, this one here, hello. I, and then hold it back here as though you're hunting for haggis. That'll be me kicked out of the country then, won't it? 
that's more, that's my, my um, uh, Gardener Willie impression, isn't it? I think they're sunny. No, it's not. That's more my <laughs> drunk in the corner of Saki Hall Street. I think they're sunny. Have you been out for the night? Yeah, you got a chip. <laughs> the thing about um, most uh, Glasgow slash Scottish drunks, let's say Glasgow, okay, because I don't want to, because I, I know the Glasgow ones, I don't really know uh, any of the other ones, but they're super friendly, but they're aggressively friendly, okay? It's like uh, um, you walk past one and he's got a bag of chips and he's like, hey there, son, you're looking a wee bit hungry. Have a chip. And you're like, oh no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I've just come out of the pub. I'm just gonna go buy a pizza myself. It's perfect. Have it, you'll be having a chip. <laughs> and they get more and more aggressive until you take a chip off and he's like, ah, there you go, laddie. As he gives you a big hug and you end up going, oh, you smell. Um. <laughs> but yeah, aggressively friendly. So if you're a tourist, okay, and you come to Scotland and you're out, um, let's say after like 11 o'clock at night and you're walking through Socky Hall Street or somewhere and there's lots of people who have one or a few too many jars of ale, let's say, and, some, and one of them starts talking to you and it sounds like they're just spitting bullets at you. <laughs> Chances are they're asking how you are and have you had a lovely evening. So you just say, oh, I'm having a lovely evening. <laughs> Although maybe not like that. <laughs> uh, right, where, where are we? Sorry, 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 sorry. <sighs> we can put, put this into the filing cabinet of the more kind of uh, loose on the, one of my videos. Again, Bit like the apple, right, let's do uh, biceps, so hands behind you, sorry. Hands behind you, rotate your thumbs outwards and that'll stretch your long head of your biceps, okay? Um, when I say hands behind you, for podcast people, it's like you're a ski jumper, okay? So you're like, wee, I'm flying, mom, look at me. Um, yeah, I often think that it's like, every time someone who's like, um, it's like the big American corporate executive is like, hey, I've heard of this guy, Rollong. He seems to be making these videos on the internet. I'm gonna check him out, see if we wanna give him a million dollars to make some videos for us. Don't quite know where I was with that American accent. It started somewhere and then ended up somewhere completely different. Anyway, and then they watch and then they go, oh no, let's go to that other guy, the guy with the horse. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sure that's that's happened. That someone's maybe thought, um, hey, he's got relatively good following, let's try it. And then they watch and they go, nope, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, where are we next? Uh, triceps. If ever there was a video that I should really just kind of go, I shouldn't put this one online. I'm sure it's this one. Hands up in the air. <laughs> and then uh, just hand, not hands. Uh, so it comes back and touches your spine, your elbows mostly pointing the air, then use your other hand to point it all the way up in the air and then just hold it there for a wee while to get stretched into your triceps. Ta-da! Um, yeah, yeah. Ah, you know, one day it might happen, someone might come along and say, you know what, you could, with just a little bit of a push of professionalism or whatever, we could turn you into something. I do have big hopes. I did tease something that's going to be coming soon. Um, and I may, uh, it's a little kind of like, not side venture, because it's still about rowing and still about rowing along workouts. But it may be, let's swap arms, do the other tricep. It may be that I suddenly put on a pair of professional pants for, um, for a moment if this all kind of pays off but it's fine because you know what why not why not have a <laughs> have a one series where it's just me and then another series where it's like hey i'm roll along john that's more like keanu reeves well no it's not i don't know who that is is it keanu no dude <laughs> um i tell you i saw the the, the recent john Wick film i know i was talking about guardians of the galaxy but i can't remember if i said about the latest john Wick. i just love the john Wick films he says, what, 15 words in the entire thing and all it is is just headshot, headshot, headshot. It's ridiculous. It's cartoon. Just, yeah, but incredibly fun to watch. Anyway, right, I am sorry. I don't know. Call it dehydration. Maybe I've gone a little bit mad from the lack of uh, fluid that's gone. Like, like even today, look at that. That's me coming on here. I've only had half my water bottle, so I'm obviously just like running on fumes. Um, yeah, so um, please come back for more. <laughs> As he idly flicks, flicks his machine, kind of going, I'm sorry, please come back for more. <laughs> oh, not every video can be a, a, a great one, so, and you, you never know. Maybe, maybe maybe part of the reason that you hang around is, is for moments like this where I've, yeah, I've just, oh, is, is, would this be, is this like a midlife crisis? <laughs> or... Is it a mid-plan crisis where I, this is uh, us, if you're doing four sessions a week, 
then we are at the end of week four of the Get Fit by Rowing series. So there's two more weeks to go. Two more weeks to go. Um, uh, yeah, so eight more sessions and then we're done. If you're only doing three a week, that's perfectly fine. If you're doing five a week, that's perfectly fine. But you're, fine. Fine. But you're off balance with me. So, uh, but yeah, so at the end of week four, um, it's currently a Saturday. So I'll have a rest day from rowing tomorrow and then I will kick back into it again on Monday. Okay, so if, that, if you're hanging around waiting for rows, then at one point on Monday, which will be Monday the... Well, actually, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm not going to say. Because you know what? You're going to be watching this probably months away from wherever it is. But if, yeah, uh, anyway. All right, okay. Should I stop talking? <sighs> I really should, shouldn't I? Yeah. Um, okay, thank you so much for doing this one. I'm sorry this has been a weird one. Um, I hope you enjoyed the row at least. <laughs> and, and I will see you in the next session. All right, remember to use the, the hashtag uh, get fit with row along. Um, if you can leave a comment, don't make it too abusive, please. <laughs> I'm obviously a very fragile man. Um, but yeah, use the hashtag get fit with row along if you can leave a comment. And um, I'll hopefully see, hopefully please see you in the next video. I'll, I'll promise I'll pull my socks up by then and be a bit better at it. Um, yeah, I'll see you then. Please take care of yourselves, okay? Roll well, be well. Bye-bye. You know it's not a good row when you have to apologize at the end. <laughs>